My name is Frank Reckenberg, owner of Computer Restore. I'd like to take this time to ensure that you have filled out the registration card. It's very important, if you're to be able to be supported in the future, that you do send me this registration card. Thank you for purchasing my tape titled, How to Repair Your 1541 Commodore Disk Drive. Computer Restore is in no way, shape, or form affiliated with Commodore Business Machines. We are our own company and are entirely. Let's take a little time and talk about the warranty on your disk drive. Is it under warranty? If your drive's under warranty, then I recommend sending it to the manufacturer and making them support that warranty and have them repair it. But if it is not under warranty, then please proceed on. Let's talk a little bit about the technical terms. I wrote the technical terms down throughout this program for simplicity, and the reason why I did that is I don't want any communication barrier between you or myself. Let's talk about the precautions you must take when you're working on your disk drive. The biggest precaution you must take is ensure that your Commodore 1541 drive is unplugged. You need to make sure that it's unplugged when you're working on it. The reason why I say that is electrical shock hazards can result in fatal death. So you need to make sure that when you're working on your disk drive, you're under controlled conditions, and you do have that power cord unplugged when you're, when you're opening it up. Some other precautions you must take is working on a clean, non-conductive surface. And you'll notice throughout this tape, I'm using a regular old white bath towel, and I'm setting it down on a non-conductive surface, which is wood or something that does not create a path of electricity to flow through. And another reason why I use a white bath towel is because it also stops the case and the covering of the disk drive from getting scratched up. Protective clothing. You're going to need to wear rubber gloves when you're working in the preventive maintenance section of this tape and eye protection. And the reason why I say that is you're going to be working with compressed air. The compressed air is what we're going to be using to blow the dust and the small particles out of the inside of your disk drive. So you need to make sure that you're wearing some type of eye protection and that you're wearing rubber gloves. And the reason why I want you to wear rubber gloves is because the chemicals that you're going to be using to clean the inside of the disk drive are not really caustic, but they can absorb into your skin. So we want to prevent that. So that's why we want you to wear them rubber gloves. And also make sure that you have your eye protection like goggles. And if you have any type of jewelry on you, say rings or anything, anything that is metal that can create a path, please take them off your hands because you don't want anything shorting out the inside of the drive. Also, you need to make sure that you're working in a well-ventilated area. And I can't stress that enough neither. A well-ventilated area means not a little closet in your house with the doors closed. It means an open area where if you have any fumes that they can ventilate and you don't become overcome from the fumes. You don't want to work in an enclosed area. Let's talk about the 1541 drive for a little bit. The biggest problem the 1541 drive had was heat. And you'll notice that by taking your hand over, if your disk drive is running right now, take your hand and put it over the ventilated rib part of the drive on the top. You notice there's a lot of heat coming from that. Heat is a big problem with the 1541. It causes the head to go out of alignment, and it also causes the logic board to slowly but surely break down. And the reason why it does that is because with so much heat, and people don't realize if they set something over top of the ventilated part of the drive, uh, that that heat stays inside, and that just, just breaks it down really, really bad. Uh, I suggest using a muffin fan. And the reason why I say a muffin fan is it's a little fan that you can buy at uh, any of your local electronic stores. And you set that down on top of the ventilated part of the drive. And what that does is that draws the heat out and keeps it nice and cool in there. And your drive will last for a long, long time. Let's talk about it. Is it your drive? Could it be the computer? The computers have inputs and outputs. And it very well could be your computer giving you an indication that it is your drive. Take your other drive, and if it works fine with your computer, or borrow one from your friend or the, your local user group, and see if that's the problem. If uh, the computer works fine, then you know it is your disk drive. If it is your disk drive, then proceed on. Another thing I'd like to talk about is I'm not an actor. I'm a regular person, just like you. And I, I'm doing everything I can to be able to talk to you and communicate with you through this tape and show you exactly what I'm doing. There will be times when I do make little mistakes here and there, and, but what we're looking at is the context of the program. I want to make sure that you get the most out of your tape. Again, thank you for purchasing my tape, How to Repair Your 1541 Commodore Disk Drive.
In this section, we're going to talk about some of the common malfunctions that Commodore 1541 users have with this drive. Um, if you get it, you go ahead and try to load up your program, and you're, you're hearing this type of noise with your drive, and you see a file not found error, and you've already swapped it out with another drive, you know it's that this drive is the problem, then chances are you've got what 1541 commonly has go wrong with it is either a head alignment problem or a speed adjustment problem. The drive needs to turn a 300 RPMs constant and the drive also has to have the head aligned between the tracks. And in the section that we talk about head alignment and drive speed adjustment is the section that you would go to for this kind of problem. Another problem that we have with the Commodore 50, 1541 disk drive is when you go to power up, power on means turn the power on, you'll notice the green light will come on and the red light will come on and it won't go off. And nine times out of ten that problem is with a logic board and it's in the ROM, the read-only memory, and you would want to refer back to the how to repair your logic board on the 1541 section for this problem. Okay, on, on this 1541 drive, he had a problem with powering up. By powering up again, I meant turning the switch on. Turn the switch on, the green light never came on and stayed on, and the red light never came on and initialized and went off. He, with this drive, has a power problem, and to be able to repair this, you need to go to the how to repair the logic board section because it very well could be anything in the transformer or it could be in the power part of the logic board. This is another customer's drive. The problem he had with this is you turn the drive on, the green light came on, the red light came on, initialized. Initialized, I mean it comes on and then went off, telling you that the drive is ready for its next set of orders or the next thing that you want to do. He brought it in to me and said uh, he took it over to one repair facility and they wanted fifty dollars just to open it up and look at it. And I asked him, I said, well, have you thought about opening it yourself and looking inside and seeing if you could fix it? And he said, no. He said, I was kind of afraid to do it because it's, you know, my computer and everything and I don't know much about it inside. I said, okay, let me take it home and uh, let me take it, look at it and see what's wrong with it. I came over and I removed the lid from it. I went ahead and I removed the screws from the logic board and I lifted it up and I looked down in there. And if you notice, let me go ahead and remove this. I can show you a little better. If you notice, there's a right protector tab stuck in a stepper motor. And this right protector tab is so many thousands of an inch thick. And with that being stuck in between, that caused the drive to be out of alignment. So all he had to do was come in here and remove the right protector tab and it would have been fixed. This repair I charged $29.95 and I went ahead and I went in there and I also made sure the alignment was good and drive speed was exactly at 300 RPMs and I ended up charging like I said $29.95. If he would have opened this up himself and just looked in there, the obvious was his problem. And if he would have purchased this tape and used this tape, he would have been able to go ahead and do the drive speed adjustment and the alignment to make sure the alignment was perfect. And all it would have cost him was the price of this tape. And he could have used this tape in the future to be able to fix other disk drives if he liked, or he could have used it say six months, a year from now, if he has another problem with his disk drive. The tape, or this program, would have already had paid for itself. Some of the tools and equipment that you're going to need to be able to work on your disk drive are you're going to need some kind of compressed air. And the reason why I say compressed air is because this is a micro duster. What, the, what we use this for is when you open up your disk drive, we get rid of all that dust and small particles and debris that are inside that uh, disk drive. 
I need some kind of a cleaner. Uh, this cleaner is uh, basically used to get all the grime and, and uh, all the stuff off the logic board, get it nice and clean inside. And what I use for the mechanical part of the drive, I use WD-40, and I spray a little bit of this inside this drive on the rails that the drive moves back and forth on to keep them lubricated just a little bit to prevent squeaking. And now what I take from my wife is I take away uh, some of her fingernail polish. And the reason why I take some of this is because after I adjust my dry speed adjustment on my disk drive, I want to put a little bit of this on there to lock it, and it works fine. You don't have to worry about it ever vibrating loose. Okay. Another thing that I use is screwdrivers. And if you notice, I've got two types. They're both the Phillips, but I've got a small and I've got a medium. Another screwdriver I use is a small, small, small standard screwdriver or a slot screwdriver. And the reason why I use this is when I adjust the drive speed on the drive, you've got to have something small that will fit in there. I use Q-tips to go inside and actually clean the head if needed. And what I do is I saturate these with rubbing alcohol or some kind of alcohol or I can even spray some of my solvent on it to clean the head. Another form of cleaning, and I recommend this before you really go very far on anything if you have a problem, is take your, uh, buy a commercial um, cleaner and what you do is these come in an envelope and they come saturated in alcohol and what you do is you move them and you stick them in the envelope and you stick that in your disk drive and you run it a couple times and that will clean your head. And that may be the only problem wrong. So you want to go ahead and do that and make sure that the, that takes care of it because if it does then you don't have to open up your drive and you might not have a speed alignment problem or uh, alignment problem. Now another thing we need to talk about is a software program that you would want to use to use to help you assist you in uh, doing a drive speed adjustment and a head alignment. There are many, many brands out there on the market today, and I'm sure that just about every user has one form or another a head alignment and drive speed adjustment. Uh, I use Vorpal Utilities. I've been using Vorpal Utilities for a long time, and it just is really easy to use, and it gets down to the meat of things. In this section, we're going to discuss how to assemble and disassemble your 1541 drive. If you run into future problems and you don't remember how things go back together, refer to this section. This section will take you through, and it's like a little tutorial. It takes you through and shows you each step, step by step, and explains to you each part of the drive. So if you ever have a problem, please come back to this section. The first part you have to do to disassemble the 1541 drive is you must remove these four screws. And it's going to take a small Phillips, like the small one I showed you, to remove those screws. Once you've loosened them screws, set it back down on the table and lift the cover up. Set it down to the side. The next thing you have is you need to remove your RF shield. And the RF shield has two screws, one on each side. Remove those screws and pop it off. Set it to the side. Now, as you're removing the screws, you can either take masking tape and, and put them on the masking tape and mark where they go, or you can take them and put them in a little cup. But you need to remember how things go because these screws are in a machined uh, insert. So you want to make sure that the screws go exactly where they came out. Now we've exposed the logic board and the mechanical part of the drive. And to remove the logic board, what you need to do is remove the power transformer off the logic board plug. And then you want to remove your drive light plug. You notice this one goes to the drive light, the green light. And then you want to remove your head 
plug, and this plug goes directly to the head on the mechanical part of the drive. And remember, that's always the first one. And remember exactly how it came off. Notice the little slots are pointed inwards. And it has a number one there. And the number one goes at the beginning. So you want to make sure that's how that comes off. And just remove the other plugs in the same order, making sure that you don't damage any of the connectors. And like I said, if you have a problem, remember how they go. Even though they're the same numbers and everything, go ahead and mark them with masking tape. Now, if you noticed, on the last one, it's got three just like, like the other one that came off the drive light. If you just keep in mind or keep remember that the one that goes to the drive light goes to the end, then you'll know exactly where this one goes. Just keep in mind that this one's the last one. You remove those plugs, and then you remove the screws from the logic board. And there's several of them all around it. Remove those, set that to the side. Then we have our logic board removed. And you notice on a logic board, you have what we call our ROM read-only memory, or these two. And then it the, has the serial plugs, and it has the bridge rectifiers. And the bridge rectifiers have something to do with the power. But basically, this is our logic board. We'll set that down to the side. The next thing we have is we want to be able to remove the mechanical part of the drive. So in order to remove the mechanical part of the drive, we have several screws on each side of the cabinet that we remove. And what that enables us to do is to lift it right out of the case. So I want to go ahead and remove that, set that to the side. Now we have our mechanical part of the drive. And if you notice, you've got a little um, drive speed adjustment right there and that's just a little uh, slot there that you take your small screwdriver and you can adjust it either way to make your drive speed faster or slower. What we want to do is we want to re remove the mechanical part from the cabinet and we have two screws on each side so we want to go ahead and remove those. Now when you're removing these and if, the, if you feel like it's going to strip and you feel like it's, you're not going to be able to get them out with your screwdriver, then what I do is I take a speed handle and what a speed handle does is gives you a little more torque and it can turn, uh, turn it into a screwdriver and uh, gives you a little more torque so you can get them out because sometimes they're in there real, real tight and you don't want to strip them. Go ahead and remove the other side. Take care of not dropping any screws. Then what you do is you just lift it up from the cabinet and pull it straight out. This is the mechanical part of the drive. Like I said earlier, that's the drive speed adjustment pod. This is the stepper motor. And the stepper motor, you loosen the screws and you're able to adjust it either way. The holes are elongated on the stepper motor. And then you have the flywheel that turns the hub inside, which turns the diskette. And it's turned by a little motor over here. And when you're taking this apart, it's always good to look at this belt to make sure it's in good shape. You want to make sure it's in good condition while you're in it. This is the mechanical part of the drive. Notice the head. This is the head. This is what reads off the diskette. This is the little head part right here that you have to clean. Take that and set that to the side. Now, what we have left in the cabinet is we have our power transformer, our on and off switch, 
And right in here, we have the fuse holder. I'm going to remove the fuse. All you do is take your screwdriver, loosen it up, and there's your fuse. And it goes back in the reverse order. Might have to apply a little pressure to it because it is spring loaded. Okay, now if you want to remove the power transformer, all you have to do is remove these four screws and your disk drive is completely disassembled. Okay, now we've got it apart a million pieces. How do we put it back together? Well, here's how we're going to do it. We'll turn around and we'll set the cabinet back the way it should be, facing forward. Take the mechanical part of the drive, and before you put it back together, make sure that uh, these screws are tight. Make sure everything looks good. If you see a bare wire or something look like it's been a problem in the past, go ahead and fix it. Make sure everything's tight. Make sure everything looks like it's in good condition. After you've taken a look over it and everything looks good, go ahead and just slide it back in. Now remember, it's not going to go in right the first time. It's going to take a little time. You need to make sure everything lines properly up in the slots and everything and that you're not trying to force nothing in. You don't want to force anything in. Take the connectors and set them out to the side. Okay, now you want to install your four screws on each side and your mechanical part of the drive that I refer to is installed in the cabinet. The next step is taking the logic board and installing it. I'm just going to put a couple screws in it for right now just to hold it in place. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to install my power transformer. Now, you're probably asking yourself, well, which way does it go? If you notice, naturally it sits in the position that it's supposed to be plugged in. But if you have a question of whether or not it plugs in like that. Take an ink pen when you before you disconnect it and mark one side of it, notch it or something. That way you know it goes to that side and you won't have a problem for reference in the future. Now we've installed the transformer part of it. Now we're going to go over here and we're going to install our plugs. And I'll start by plugging in the drive head first. Doesn't really matter how you start, just as long as you line it up perfectly Make sure that the notch is towards the inside. It's number one is one, and then plug it in. And do the same thing with the other plugs. Now, if you've noticed, since I don't have the cover anywhere around, then when I get down to this, well, which one do I plug it in? If you remember that the cover, the light, green light, plugs in the last one, then you know that this one plugs right next to it. You want to look at everything. Make sure everything's plugged in properly and you have the pins and everything aligned properly. And then your next step is to take the cover, set it down, take the metal cabinet, set it down in there. And then put your screws in that holds the metal cabinet to the the cover. Then you want to take your green light plug and plug it into the last, making sure that the little holes are pointed inward. And then what you want to do is kind of tuck the cables to the side. Then you have your RF shield. And the RF shield, if you notice, has got a couple dimples on one side. Well, them dimples go the opposite side of the screws, which is on this side of the drive. What you do is, if you notice that there's an opening right here, and this is what goes right here, and that's the opening for the cables to come through. So
So what I do is I line it up with the holes, taking care not to damage anything, and lining them up with the screws holes on the side, right there and there, and then put your screws back in. Now you've got your RF shield installed, you've got your logic board back in, you've got your mechanical part of your drive in there, and all you have to do is go ahead and do one last look on everything, make sure everything looks right, and all you do is put your cover back on, and then put the screws in the bottom, the four screws. In this section, we're going to talk about, well, my drive doesn't work. I've got all kinds of funny things coming up on the screen. I can't even get things coming up on the screen. I can't get the computer to access the drive. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to decipher whether or not we've got the problem in our logic board, or on the mechanical part of the drive, or even the transformer. So what we want to do is we want to do a process of elimination. Now. If you don't have another drive that you can use, uh, that you own, I would borrow friends or I'd borrow one from a user group. I'm sure there's somebody out there willing to help you because sooner or later they're going to be in the same boat and they're going to need help. So what you'd want to do is you want to go ahead and get the other drive, open it up, and what we want to try to do is we want to decipher what major component is bad with the disk drive. Is it a logic board, or is it a mechanical board, or the transformer? So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and disconnect this drive, pull the logic board off, and set it to the side. Take, take it and set it to the side. Take the one that you know is good from the good drive, remove it, and install it on your drive or your other drive. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to decipher, is it in the logic board? Go ahead and hook it up. Now remember how things go. If you don't, you can always go to the section on how to disassemble it and assemble it to refer back to where you need to be. Okay, now that we're all hooked up, before this disk drive wouldn't work. I couldn't get the the green light to stay on and I couldn't get the steady light to stay on to, and come off on the red light. So what I'm doing is I swapped out the logic board. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it in and now when I turn it on two things are going to happen. The green light's going to come on and stay on and the red light's going to come on, initialize and then go off tell me that it's ready for its next set of commands. So let's go ahead and turn it on and see what happens. Okay, the green light came on, stayed on, and the red light came on and went off. So I know that my problem with this disk drive is in my logic board. And we're going to have a whole section on just the logic board and how to troubleshoot this. So let's look at it from another position. What happens if it's not the logic board? What happens if that works fine? And that doesn't fix the problem. Well, let's look at the mechanical part of the drive. Let's go ahead and disconnect it. Disconnect the transformer. This is another easy way of doing it. Take the screw out. And lay the logic board over to the side. Now, if it's the mechanical part of the drive, what we can do is we can remove the logic or the uh, mechanical part of the drive from the other mechanical part of the drive. Take the one assembly and put it in the other assembly. 
if you put this assembly and swap them out and it works, then you know that your problem is going to be in the mechanical part of the drive. And if you have a problem with the mechanical part of the drive, then we'll know that we got several problems that it possibly could be. It could be the drive speed adjustment. It's not turning at a constant 300 RPMs. It's the alignment, the way the head tracks up and down on a diskette. And we'll know that'll be from either turning the, the stepper motor one way or the other. It's not right in between the tracks like it's supposed to, to be able to read the information. Or we've got a head problem. Our head's bad. So those are the things that we would look at on this drive that we could fix ourselves. Or you very well could have the belt broke. It could be bad. But those are the things that we'd look on the mechanical part of the drive. We go from the obvious, simple things to the things that uh, might be even more complicated. But what you want to do is you want to go ahead and maybe even before you look at this, if the light's not coming on, come over here and remove the fuse. You might have just blew a fuse. Take the fuse. Pull it out and see if it's good or bad. If it's bad, the little line that you see going across there, it'll be blown, it'll be burnt. You'll be able to tell it's burnt. Now, these fuses are rated at, it's written on the side, 1 amp, 250 volts. Now, you can go with a higher volt fuse, but you can't go with a higher amperage. You want to make sure that you've got that 1 amp. If it's more than 1 amp, don't put it in. You're going to cause problems. Replace the fuse if it's bad. And try it again. But the only time that you might have a fuse problem is if either light comes on. If neither light comes on, then it's a power problem. Uh, from anywhere from the fuse to the transformer to the logic board. Now what you can do is you took the other one from the other drive and you, you stick it in here. Making sure not to damage it again. Set it down in there. Install your logic board. Remember how I showed you to put the connectors on. Don't forget your power transformer. Make sure it's all hooked up. Plug it in. And see if it comes on. Okay, the light, green light came on, the red light came off, came on and went off. And if we take a program and we stick it into this drive, we try to load that program. Make sure you plug in the serial port. It's very important that you plug that in. You notice I forgot it. Turn it on. Try to load the program. You notice the program loaded. So from that, I knew that I had a problem with the mechanical part of the drive and 
what you need to do is refer, if that's the problem you got, refer to how to repair the mechanical part of the drive to fix that problem. In this section, we're going to talk about, okay, your disk drive, you turn it on, the light came on, green light came on, stayed on, the red light came on, initialized, everything's fine, but you still can't load a program. So what we're looking at is, you tried your load your alignment program, and your alignment program wouldn't load. And the reason why it wouldn't load, you either drive speed is either too fast or too slow, or your head alignment is not correct. And if your program will not load, your alignment program will not load uh, your, in your drive, the chances are your alignment is pretty bad. It's way out of alignment. They've incorporated, the companies have incorporated a um, wide margin of error just to load the program up so you're able to go ahead and adjust it properly. So what I've had to do is I tried to load up from my disk and it wouldn't load. So what I had to do is I had to come over with my other drive, load the program up in the computer. Now what I have to do is I had to come over and plug it in to my other drive, turn it on. Okay, that has gave me the options to go ahead and I've already loaded the program up in the computer to be able to access this, com this drive to see if I can get any information out of it. So then what I do, I just come over and take my disk and I stick it in the other drive, the one that's bad, and I come up here, if you notice the menu on Vorpal Utilities has Vorpal Disk File Utilities, Head Alignment, Speed Check. Vorpal disk copy utility and, and V loader and install. What we want to go to is we want to go to option C. We want to go to the head alignment. Select that out of the menu. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to see what our uh, drive speed is. That's the first thing we want to check. So we select B, and it tells us right there it has to be a constant between 297 and, and 303 RPMs, and I keep it at a constant 300 RPMs. Notice our disk drive right now is turning at uh, 297.21 flexing or fluctuating, and we know right there that it's not at 300 RPMs. So what we need to do is we need to be able to adjust that at the 300 RPMs, as close as we can get it. Remember earlier I told you this little pod right here is for drive speed adjustment. On the older drives, the Commodore 1541 drives, this pod is on the bottom. So what you have to do is actually remove the cabinet out of the, out of the cover and approach it from the bottom, and you're able to adjust it either way. But on this particular drive, what we want to do is we want to tr turn this one way or another to get it at 300 RPMs. Take it up a little bit. Now we're right at 300 RPMs. So we know our drive speed adjustment. I'll take it down just a little bit. And now once you've got it set at 300 RPMs, what you want to do is take a little bit of your fingernail polish and just dab a little bit on the side to lock it so it don't vibrate loose. Okay, that's the drive speed adjustment. The next thing we want to look at is how's our head alignment. We select our head alignment, and this program will tell us where we stand. Right now, we're 100 inward. And if you notice up on top on the menu, 1 through 25 is good. Uh, 26 through 50 is acceptable. 51 or more is out of alignment. We're at 100 inward. That means we're way out of alignment. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go into the, the mechanical part of the drive and we're going to have to adjust the alignment one way or another, try to get it between 1 and 25, and I try to get it as close to 1 as I can. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and shut the drive off. Remove the power source.
remove the light, take the drive itself, and remove it, the cabinet from out inside the cover. Set the cover down. Now what we're trying to get to is we're trying to get to the screws that adjust the actual stepper motor one way or the other. Now another way you can do it if you don't want to if you don't want to remove the cover or remove it all out uh, the logic board and everything off the cabinet then go ahead and do it that way. Okay now the way that I like to do it instead of leaving it inside the cabinet is like I like to remove the mechanical part of the drive from the cabinet and pull it out and set it up like this. And the reason why I like doing that is that way I got complete access to the stepper motor and I can adjust it either way. Now what I did is I removed, loosened the screws on the stepper motor so I have that uh, lateral movement so I can move it back or forth. Then what I do is I go ahead and I move it one way or the other just a little bit and tighten down the screws just a little bit, not too tight. Make sure it's secured. And then I run my alignment program and see where that puts me. What we're trying to do is get this perfect. Okay, we're still 44 inward. So what we want to do is move it a little more. Now, a lot of this has to do with the software that you buy also. So you want to make sure that you get, get your alignment program that is, is user friendly, it's easy to use, it's not very complicated. We don't want to spend five days learning how to use the utility program when we could already have the drive fixed and been done in half an hour to an hour. Let's run it again and see what happens. Notice how easy it was for me to adjust this because it was already sitting out. We're 23 inward. We're getting a little better here. Loosen the screws again. If you want to, you can take a little scrub or something and mark where you came from and where you're going with on it so you can use it for reference. Move it just a little more. Run it through and see what it says. And you just keep doing this continuously till you get where you've got it perfect. Now right there I've got one inward and that's almost perfect. You can't get much better than that. So now we know that our alignment's good. We want to go ahead and tighten down our screws. And what I do is I take some fingernail polish and lock them on each side. That way I know they're not going to vibrate loose. Now I know that my alignment is fine. I know my dry speed is fine. Now if we had a head read problem with this part of the drive, then we would never ever got to be able to read off this diskette. So what you would do there is you got two options. You can take the other one off the other drive, which is real simple to take off, or you can go ahead and order one. Or you can also, one thing is you can go ahead and send the mechanical part of the drive in to have repaired. Instead of sending the whole drive, you know your problem's in here, you can send off just this part if you don't want to go that far. But I recommend that if it is you're having a problem even reading it after you uh, went ahead and tried to load your alignment program up, then I recommend that you go ahead and you get another head assembly and try that out. Chances are you've got a problem with your head. It's probably shorted. So now we've got our alignment perfect and we've got our drive speed perfect. Our alignment's setting that one inward 
And remember the scale up here was 1 to 25 is good. And our drive speed is at 300 RPMs. This drive right now is adjusted for optimum performance. That means it'll last for a long time. So now what we go ahead and do is we shut off our drive, disconnect it, Now you notice I had power hooked up to this drive, but we were under controlled conditions. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and put the mechanical part back in the cabinet. To do that, I have to remove my screws from the logic board. Install the mechanical part of the drive. If you have to, set the logic board over the side. Install your four screws. Take the logic board. Install the logic board. I'm just going to put a screw or two in it for the time be being to hold it. Make sure it's in there solid. Now what I'm going to do is I've got it all back together. I've got it sitting in my cabinet. I'm all ready to put my cover on it. Well, if you're ready to do that, you need to do something before you do that. You don't want to do that. Most people think, well, it's all ready to go. I'm going to put the cover on. You could still have a problem. A problem may be is you might not have one of your connectors on. Why put the cover back on and you're going to have to turn around and take it back off or the RF shield. So what I do is I go ahead and put it all back together, hook it back up, Make sure everything's plugged in right. Turn it on. A green light came on. A red light came on and went off. Let's go ahead and make sure our alignment is good still. This is the quality part of working on your drive. You want to make sure that everything's fine. Let's go to drive speed. Okay, we're still at 300 RPMs. We're good there. Let's check our drive alignment again. You don't want to have to rip this thing all apart again. You want to make sure that everything's right before you put that cover on there. As long as the alignment is between 0 and 25, you're in good shape. And right now it fluctuated up to 3, but there's nothing wrong with that. As long as it don't go over 25, we're in good shape. So now what you want to do is go ahead and unplug it, and then go ahead and put the RF shield back on it and the cover. And you've already did a drive speed adjustment and alignment, and maybe even replaced a head. You've already saved yourself on drive speed and alignment alone at least $50. And if you would have had to replace the head, you're looking at a probably a $100 repair, anywhere from $50 to $100. So already it's paid for itself, the program has. Now what you want to do is most of the times the problem that you have with these disk drives is going to be a head alignment or it's going to be a drive speed adjustment. It's very seldom is going to be a, a component failure unless you yourself have not properly taken care of the drive by leaving the ventilated part of the drive open or putting a muffin fan on it to, to dissipate some of the heat. So this drive right now is set for optimum performance and it will last a long, long time. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about the logic board. Okay, we know that's not in the mechanical part of the drive, but we know we've got a problem with the logic board. 
A logic board is composed of what we call bridge rectifiers. These are capacitors, and these are the little regulators for the power supply. And then we've got our ROM chips, and we've got our processor. This is an intelligent drive. It has its own processor. And then we've got other various little resistors and diodes and things that compose this logic board. But if we sit down and we try to figure out all those little things, try to figure out which one's bad, in this, we're going to run into a problem. We're going to run into a lot of time. And you're going to also run into an area of expertise that I'm not going to be able to teach you overnight. Um, it's something that uh, it takes years and years and years of training on how to be able to troubleshoot all of these big, all these components on this logic board. But there is something you can do with this logic board. Any of these chips that are socketed, and by socketed, if you notice, here's a ROM chip installed on this logic board, and let's look at this one. You notice that's a socket. That's where the microchip plugs into. And there are several chips on this logic board that are like that. Every one of these big ones are, and, every, and both of these are. And the reason why they were socketed is somebody, whoever designed the board, said to themselves, well, we're having a lot of problems with these, or there's a possibility that these are going to go bad. Let's make it easy so we don't have to desolder the whole chip from the logic board. We can just pop it out and put another one in. We call this technique uh, shotgun. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and say, well, why not pop one of these chips out at a time that are in sockets and swap them out with another one? Maybe that'll fix the problem. Well, on this particular drive, it's got a ROM problem. We turn it on. The green light stays on all the time, and so is the red light. We're having a problem reading this. So we've got ourselves a ROM problem. So what you want to do is, of course, set the drive board aside. And you want to come over to the other logic board. And you want to take a soft device. And wood would even be fine. Uh, you can pick up any at any electronic store. You can pick up what they call insertion and desertion tools. But for our needs, I just go ahead and I get right up underneath the chip on both sides. And I just put a little force, even force, steady. And I just pop it right out. That's how you remove the, remove the ROM chip. Now you notice I'm holding the chip like this, and you notice it's got a lot of little pins. Them little pins set inside the sockets, one for one. And if you also notice on the chip, there's a little notch at the top of it. What that means is this notch goes in at the head of the silk screen notch on the logic board. So you need to make sure that chip goes in exactly that way. If you don't, you're going to have problems. You need to install it the proper way. So what I did is I took a good ROM chip that I know this logic board's good. I come over to my drive. Now remember, you're neutralizing yourself all the way through this on uh, with static electricity, so you don't have a problem with that. Go ahead and evenly insert the chip into the logic board. Now, a lot of electronic stores, you can get these little wristbands that go around your arm. Have a little alligator clip or a little clip, and you can plug it onto the metal part of your drive, and you're neutralized automatically the whole time you're working with it. But we went ahead and we've installed that ROM chip. Now we're going to see if that was the problem. We turn it on. Notice the green light came on, stayed on. The red light came on and went off. So that was our problem. Now I'm faced with getting me a ROM chip. There are several ways that you can order uh, companies that you can get these ROM chips through, but I'll be more than happy to sell you that ROM chip if you choose to, to order through me. In most cases, we can get your order out the next day. So we've already fixed our logic board. We already know that it's the ROM. We got that ROM chip for about $15, $20. We installed it in the drive, and we fixed our drive. So now we know that it was the ROM problem. And you've already fixed it, and it's good to go for till the next time you have a problem. But you've already shown yourself that you can fix your drive, and it's not as complicated as you think. Now, if you do remove all these socketed chips and replace them, 
with the same ones and you still have a problem, then obviously you've got something else in this logic board that you're not going to have the capabilities to fix. And when it comes down to that, I will be more than happy to fix that part of the drive if you choose to send it to me. And it will cost you a lot less money for shipping it and for me to troubleshoot it because it's already removed from the inside of the drive and it could be something as simple as this bridge rectifier and this part only cost two dollars and fifty cents and it could be something as simple as that but on the logic board do this process of elimination start with the ROM chips and work your way down through the processor and the other couple chips and chances are you're going to be able to fix your logic board There's a few more things I want to talk about on the 1541 drive since we're in this section. Another thing you need to look at is your power transformer. That very well could be giving you a problem and also your fuse. So before you even open it up, go ahead and look at uh, if you've got a power problem and your lights are not coming on, check your fuse out on the back. Make sure your fuse is good. It may very well be blown. You might have had a surge. If the fuse is good, then try swapping out the transformer. That may go ahead and fix your problem. If it's the transformer, then it's a simple removal and installation, or you can send the whole drive to me. Uh, it depends on how you want to do it. I don't know, uh, remember earlier we talked about uh, the different types of drives that Commodore made. This is one of their older ones. And you notice the different way that locking mechanism for the disc is the old flip top style. On this particular drive, the drive speed adjustment on this drive is located right here. There's a little hole here to the side, and it's got the same pod inside just like the other one. Commodore decided they had to put that on top. And if you notice also in these little circles and everything on this flywheel, you can uh, do the drive speed adjustment on this, this drive by running your drive, trying to load up a program and look at it and see if it's walking either backwards or forwards. If it's walking backwards or forwards, you can adjust this screw to make it perfect. But I recommend using the software because this was a long, long time ago before we had any utilities to be able to do that ourselves. In this section, we're going to talk about preventive maintenance. Preventive maintenance is going to ensure that your disk drive runs for a long, long time. What we're going to talk about is how to be able to open up your drive and the little things that we're going to do to your drive to ensure that it does continue to run for a long time. Basically, what you want to do is open up your computer, remove the RF shield. What you want to do is you want to come in here with these chemicals that we showed earlier and you want to go ahead and spray all the dust and dirt and everything out of there. Now if you notice I'm not wearing my rubber gloves but we're not actually going to spray any of these chemicals in here. We're going to take you through a dry run and show you exactly how we want to do it but uh, you must ensure that you are wearing your protective clothing when you do this. Basically what you want to do is you want to open up the drive, take a look inside, take your micro duster and all this is is compressed air and you take that and you spray all the dust off the inside of the drive. Now you notice on this can you've got a precision nozzle and this precision nozzle is something that is very important. You need this on everything that you get because you want to be able to direct and control the direction of airflow so you can get little particles and dust and everything out. Uh, basically you want to come in here and spray the whole logic board and after it's all sprayed and dried up and everything, and go ahead and take the logic board and lay it over to the side. Now, do you notice something in here? Look at it real close. What am I not doing? Well, if you take a real good look at it, the power plug is disconnected. It's not on there. That is one thing that uh, I want to ensure that you are aware of and you know that it's not plugged in. We have no power. We don't even have the serial plug plugged into the logic board. 
I want you to be aware of that. I want you to keep remembering that because we don't want any problems to happen in the future. So you go ahead and you take the logic board off and set it out over to the side. Now you've opened up the whole inside of the cabinet of the disk drive. What I want you to do is come in there with your duster and spray the whole inside and get all that dirt and everything out, get all that junk and everything out. Next step is take a Q-tip and either saturate it with your solvent cleaner or rubbing alcohol. And then what you do is you lift up the, this top part of the head and you go down here and you take it with a saturator and you rub that whole surface. You get all that dirt off there. If it's real dirty, do it a couple times. And when you do that, what you're doing is you're cleaning the head thoroughly. The next step is you want to come in here and you want to go ahead and take your sprayer, your cleaner, and you want to spray it all down in here, get it nice and clean. Spray all that down in there, and then as you're spraying it, come behind it with a micro air, and I don't saturate it too much, just lightly, and come behind your, with your micro air and blow it all nice and dry. This is a non-residue cleaner. In other words, it evaporates without putting anything on side inside of the board or everything. It's just a nice, clean, dry, and evaporates rapidly. And that's another reason why you need to be in a well-ventilated area, because you don't want to be breathing that stuff. It's not real caustic, it's not dangerous, but you just don't need to be breathing it. So what we did is we sprayed the whole inside down, and we went ahead and we sprayed the micro air, and we got it all nice and dry in there. So the next thing we want to do because we want to do a little lubrication. You say, well, what has to be lubricated? Just about on all mechanical mechanisms that move back and forth in one form or another on the surface have to be either lubricated somehow. In this situation, what we're going to have to do is there's little rails down there that the head moves up and down on. What we want to do is we want to take just a little bit of WD-40 and just with the nozzle, control nozzle, just spray just a little bit on each side of the rail and then work it back and forth just a little bit and get it all nice and lubricated in there and now we've lubricated it and it's going to be a lot quieter it's not going to be as squeaky or if you get kind of a squeaky noise that may be the problem so now we not only have we lubricated the drive we went in there and we cleaned it all out and sprayed it down we're going to go ahead and install our logic board and then we're going to go ahead and spray it down like we did the inside with the cleaner and the micro air right behind it and clean the whole surface here. Get all that dirt and grime off because that dirt and grime not only does, does create a path for static electricity which could uh, harm your logic board and your drive, dust also causes things to get hot. And it's like a coating that you put over everything and when things get hot and uh, you start getting a lot of resistance in there, you're going to have a problem, your chip's going to blow. So you need to be careful and I recommend doing this once every three months. And as far as doing the actual cleaning of the head, I recommend taking the cleaner disc, taking it, saturate it, or however one you got, go ahead and stick this in once a week. Go ahead and run it for a little bit. Don't run it for a minute, two minutes, five minutes. Just run it only for about 30 seconds to 45 seconds, not even a minute, just about half that. And this will, uh, in the meantime, keep that head clean because there's a lot of discs that you can buy out there that the, the disc is composed where it's got a, a mylar uh, cover and then it's coated with a, a metal oxidized, uh, ma um, magnetic oxidized coating. And what happens is if you get some of the cheaper discs, that stuff comes out and gets in the head and clogs it very simple. And it's very, it does it real, real easy. So you need to make sure that you go in here and you clean it at least once a week. And before you go any farther uh, about, you know, as far as ripping your drive apart and everything, go ahead and uh, run this through. That might just be your only problem. You might get the file error. And that, that may be the only thing. It's because you're using bad discs. And don't automatically assume that you've got a drive problem because your one program won't load. Try a bunch of other ones. You may just have a bad disc. But anyway, I recommend doing the, 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 this maintenance once every three months and go in there and uh, get it all nice and clean, put it all back together, and don't forget that muffin fan. That's very important. I like to see you using that muffin fan.
Congratulations, you fixed your first disk drive. Just think, there's a lot more of them that need to be repaired. Just think of your friends or your dads or somebody in the user group. If you haven't been able to repair it, at least you've isolated it down to the major component and you know what component is bad and you've got two choices. You can either try to go a little farther and follow the tape and uh, go into the ROM part of it and some of the other chips that I show you how to fix it. And if that's not fixing it, the only other alternative you really have is to send it to me or some other repair facility to have it repaired. Now, I give a 90-day warranty on parts and labor when I do a repair. And that's some of the things you need to look at at a repair facility. When you go in there, you need to ask for references. You need to also ask if they work on your 1541 drive. And some of the other things you need to talk to them about is what does their warranty cover? Does it cover 30 days parts and labor? Does it just call, cover 30 days on, on parts or 30 days on labor? What exactly does it cover? You need to ask these questions when you go in there. You also need to find out how long it takes them to uh, find out what exactly is wrong with it. If it takes longer than 24 hours, then you, you might have a problem there. They should be able to get a hold of you within 24 hours and tell you exactly what's wrong with it. Another thing we need to do is we need to talk to you a little bit more about these tapes. This is one of a series of tapes that I have designed and uh, had produced to show you how to work on your 1541 drive. Now there's other stuff that Commodore has out there. You have your 1571 drives, you have your 1581 drives, and the list goes on. Uh, maybe you don't own a Commodore. Maybe your friend's watching your tape right now and he's saying, well, does he work on Macintosh? Does he have anything on Apple? Well, yes, we will. We'll eventually start producing all, as many as we can to uh, get this stuff out to you, the consumer. So we're going to be making a lot of tapes here and we're going to try to give you, the consumer, a lot more power than you have. You need to be able to fight back. High repair, repair costs are getting higher and higher and higher every day. And you don't know what the, the company's doing to repair it. All you know is that your drive doesn't work when you get back. It works. You don't know what they've done in there. It could have been a simple 2 or $3 part, and they're turning around and charging you $1,500. There's no way that you should have to put up with that. With this tape, you're going to have the knowledge and the background to be able to go out there and find out what's wrong with that drive. And if you want to, you can isolate what's wrong with that drive. You can get down to the major component, and if you can't fix it, uh, at least you know when you take it into the company, after they repair it and they bring it back to you, at least you'll know if they're, what they're telling you is exactly what you isolated it down to. If they're telling you something completely different, then you need to check into that because you've already yourself already know whether it's in that logic board, that mechanical part of the drive, or exactly what is going on. And again, I'd like to thank you for purchasing my tape titled How to Repair Your 1541 Commodore Disk Drive.